the Monster Quest team is checking their lines for proof that saltwater predator sharks are in this freshwater river. They've left several jug lines and a trot line overnight. They pulled the trot line first, and there are signs something was here. Some took that. Some was really hungry. Oh, this hook was broken right off by something. The next step is to pull in the jug lines, which they released nearby. But most of the jug lines are missing. Jug lines could travel anywhere from 100 feet to half a mile to a mile, just depending on how far the current and the wind blows them. They could have been picked up by another fisherman, or strong currents could have dragged them to an entirely different location. Seagrave has a third theory. A big enough fish can pull that jug under the water. So a bull shark or another large fish could have dragged the jugs underwater and away from here. It's time to head back home, but Hales is still convinced that the bull sharks are here. Well, we didn't catch a bull shark, but we have proof. We have evidence of people catching them further north. So this must be an area where they're moving in and out. It's just an ideal environment for bull sharks. It must be an area where they're moving in and out. It's just an ideal environment for bull sharks. Meanwhile, it's day two of the Monster Quest expedition in the St. Lawrence River in search of giant Greenland sharks. Earlier, the sonar picked up a large oblong shape at this spot in this bay. But the divers have not found anything on their daytime dives. So they've decided to search at night. Data from studies of Greenland sharks tagged with radio transmitters, shows that at night, they may be more aggressive and enter shallower water. As night comes on, here we are getting out to like six, seven, eight o'clock at night. They start doing these very, very large migrations and their mean depth goes from 200 feet to about 60 feet. But a night dive is risky. To do it safely, Harvey Clark and Gallant are using special underwater halogen lights which have been used in the past to illuminate wrecks, like the Titanic. The lights hang off the end of the dock to provide a bright, secure area where the divers can see what's coming at them. As night falls, the ROV starts hunting for sharks. Suddenly, it finds a target. You look at the radar. What do we got there? That's a shark. Yeah, that looks like that's a, shark. a shark. That's yeah. definitely a shark. There he is, there he is. About 10 feet out. He's moving quick. The sonar clearly shows a large torpedo shape. The divers suit up. Got both divers here. I'm just kind of watching their backs. The divers descend into the lighted safety zone. But they'll have to leave it to have any hope of finding the shark. Ready to head off into the abyss. Topside, Lucy has trouble making visual contact with the divers in the dark. I'm pretty much blind and flying by sonar. The divers make their way towards the deeper section of the bay where the sonar picked up the shark. They're swimming side by side now. The bottom quickly drops down 50 feet, 60 feet. Their heads are on swivels right now looking for sharks. They reach their destination and they are not alone. What is that? Well, I got three objects here. I got two divers that I've been following, and then there was a big bloom right in the middle of the screen. So, it can only be one thing. 
Shark. But the shark is just out of range of the video camera. All the ROV can see is murky water. Lucy can't communicate with the divers, and the divers are unaware of the shark. And then the sonar goes blank. The ROV has lost the divers and the shark. I can't see him anymore. Finally, the divers' bubbles appear next to the dock. I'm right on top of them. Yeah. All right, I reacquired our divers here. They surface never having seen the shark. That was interesting. Well, the sharks, though. But the shark was there. They may have missed it by a matter of feet. It was a little chilling, you know, knowing it's out there. Sharks, some of nature's most fearsome and ancient predators, have ruled the oceans for millions of years. But there is evidence some are swimming far from the sea to inland locations where they are completely unexpected. These men claim they caught a bull shark in Illinois in 1937, over 600 miles from the ocean. These men say they caught several bull sharks in Louisiana in 2007, 160 miles from the ocean. And this diver saw a shark above him in the St. Lawrence River so big, it blocked out the sun overhead. Monster Quest is on an expedition in the St. Lawrence, looking for sharks the size of great whites in the cold, dark water here. So in our images like these, which appear to show fins in a tail, suggest that a Greenland shark is in this bay. But so far, the divers have not seen the creature with their own eyes. The morning following their night dive, Chris Harvey Clark and Jeffrey Gallant returned to retrieve the Aquapix camera. The camera was left overnight at the bottom of the bay. The divers, they're on their way to recover the, uh, the Aquapix. Gallant uses a dive knife to cut the ties, holding it in place. They've actually just finished uh, detaching it, so he signaled to me the ROV that's ready to come up, so uh, topside crew is going to get ready to help him out, pull it up. And up goes the Aquapix. The camera is pulled topside and is hooked to this laptop. I can see Jeffrey Gallant's gear case there and a rope going in the water. This is just before we deployed it. But once the camera was in the sediment-filled water, the image quality was problematic. Unfortunately, uh, there's just so much crud in the water, we just can't get good images. There could be a shark four feet from there, could be. we wouldn't see it. Well, we've got just terrible dark water conditions to work in. And that's, the, that's really the problem here. So far, these sonar images from the ROV are the best evidence yet of sharks in the river. The divers return to the floating dock to try one more time to get their own evidence. Brian Lucy makes a quick sweep of the bay with the video ray. But he's not finding the shark he saw on sonar last night. You've been surveying with the video ray. Yeah, I've been flying it right in the zone, uh, yeah. about 45, between 45 and 60 feet for about half an hour. And nothing? Um, haven't seen anything. Yeah, okay. Not at all. They swim out into the frigid bay down to about 30 feet. They're searching for a creature big enough to swallow seals. Then, contact. At least on sonar. Yeah, that was a big return on there. That was much bigger than a diver's. I mean, that's a big shark. The outline of a shark is clear. See a shadow there? See fin's tail? and it's within striking distance of the divers. 
There is a shark at 20 feet out here. But this time, the divers see it too. He's got a shark. He just gave me the diver signal for shark. Fin to the forehead. The shark is right below them. I'm coming up on his dorsal fin. Getting pretty close to his head. The shark is massive and looks to be a female based on lack of male anatomy. A sort of modified pelvic fin. It's covered with a spider web of cuts and scratches. Researchers believe these sharks live as long as 200 years, possibly the longest living vertebrates on the planet. Plenty of time to get banged and bruised. The shark floats along the river bottom with the video ray in tow. Still on, on his tail a little bit. He's, swing, he's getting shallow. It's moving slowly, but it could easily outpace the divers at any moment. The shark is now only a few yards from the shore and almost directly below the dock. Found him in 23 feet of water. That's pretty shallow, man. They come up close, close to the shore. Close to the dock, and then, you know, people swim off this thing. Harvey Clark uses a special green laser measurement system to get a reading of the shark's size. It looks to be at least 12 feet long and close to 1,000 pounds. But suddenly, the shark heads out to deeper water. He's moving pretty quick. I think we might have spooked him, but um, that was awesome. The divers can't go after it. They're running out of air. Reluctantly, they surface. Wow, big female. Yeah, that, that was good. 10, 12 feet. The dive confirms what eyewitnesses have long claimed. Huge sharks are living in the St. Lawrence River, close to shore, in shallow water. Climate change may be altering their feeding habits. Or they may have been here all along, waiting to be discovered. This time, they seem to pose no threat to humans. But they have had so little human contact, it remains unclear if they really are a danger. Only more up-close study of these creatures will answer that question. And although Monster Quest's expedition to the Atchafalaya Basin came up empty, bull sharks were there. One week after Monster Quest shot this interview with fisherman Alan Kimball, he caught another one. This photo shows the six foot long, 200 pound bull shark he pulled in 160 miles from the ocean. So at least some sharks are in North American river systems far from the oceans where they belong. And as long as they are here, there remains the possibility that an attack like the one in Matawan, New Jersey in 1916 could happen again. In the shallow waters, you'd be in real danger, real danger in shallow waters. You could seriously, if he wanted to take you down, take